that rare thing. It was a real conversation. I think what we've experienced has been impossible to imagine. It went really, really well. God's presence is here. In the church, so often we have what we call conversations, and they end up being uh, no such thing, but rather monologues past each other, or worse, slogan slinging at each other. This was a respectful, uh, worshipful, I would say, experience of deep listening to one another. African Christianity is largely not dependent so much on systematic theology. It's dependent so much on the few biblical texts that we can read that do not frustrate our aspirations. And this is what sustains millions of African Christians. No systematic theology, just the text. He was able to say that culture and religion <clears throat> remain in tension, and that is very much the case of Africa. Um, that's very much the case, I would say, of North America, too. There is a definite sense um, that for the gospel to be lived, we need not have others. Now, how we interpret that, how we bring people in, I think is going to be part of the work of this group. What I've really loved is that notion that for many people, uh, LGBT issues have been that of justice. For many other people, LGBT issues have been that of morality. And so when we begin to hear more about those is when I think we're able to um, move together. Some of the provinces take over this issue as an extension of the Western imperialism and moral decay. Another group acknowledge the presence and recognize the, the fact that homosexuality and Islamism is a, as a reality and that those affected need acceptance and but not at the point of leadership. Others recognize that this has got to do with identity, not choice. Uh, showed for me more explicitly than I'd ever seen before how much the work of relationship building is important. Uh, the Anglican Communion is essentially relationships and it showed me that we're, we have work to be done in understanding each other and working with each other and learning about each other. I think it's much more difficult to be in embedded in a conflict when you're in a personal relationship uh, with somebody that you know and then it becomes not a theoretical issue um, but people. We're talking about people and we're talking about real life. With more conversations and especially the small groups we're getting to get beyond uh, the Episcopalians or the people from the north. You're beginning to relate to people as people. They have freely wanted to talk about their families, they wanted to know about my family, they wanted to know where I studied for my priesthood, they wanted to know more about me as an individual, as a North American, as a black man in North America, as a married man in North America. When people have been together for more than a day, they begin to, the masks begin to fall off and people begin to share of themselves. You know, there's been no sort of defensiveness, people haven't tried to pretend. There's been this amazing openness to this opportunity. And so people haven't been afraid to ask the silly questions. And, and I think that's enabled everybody uh, to, to hear the thing, to ask what they want to ask, and then to hear things that um, they, they would never, never hear if they hadn't asked that question and been so open. All the gospel readings of my whole life that have been chanted to me, I got it. I got that Jesus was for me. It was a salvation moment, and I don't come from a tradition that believes in salvation, but that's what it was. I got it. I wanted to be about it. I wanted to make a life in some way that was about this, because I felt free. I didn't know I wasn't free, and I felt free. And my next thought was, I'm gay. My understanding has been, and from what I have received, uh, 
has been that uh, uh, people uh, with uh, orientation, such orientation, people who are in same-sex relations are sinful people, morally, uh, morally corrupt, people who have chosen a sinful way of life and it's like they have diverted, diverted from the Christian way of life and therefore they want to influence uh, that way of life into the real Christian life. And I've come to discover that these are Christians and uh, what has happened is an experience through their spiritual journeys and they are very genuine people and uh, and actually it's not what I thought and uh, uh, it came as a new realization that no it's not true to think myself to think that these are people who have chosen a sinful, of life, a sinful way of life how can we make the Bible a resource for addressing our cultural religious, political, economic prejudices against sexuality without alienating the masses of African Christians who are also using the same Bible? And how can we make the Bible the place of refuge for victims of homophobia and homomism without once again alienating the fellow Christians? Because my thinking is that sexual minorities are not wanting to become Christians at the expense of everybody else. They want to be in communion with these people whose readings are making them victims. In African contexts, we don't have safe, sacred places in which to engage with issues of sexuality. I mean, that's come out over and over again. All we did here was to facilitate to enable something, uh, to create a space where, where you were allowed to bring uh, religious discourse and issues of sexuality together in the same room. And that just isn't allowed. It's not permitted. The gatekeepers of our churches, of our cultures, keep it out. The most exciting thing for me was, was the Bible study. Uh, it was really great to hear the, the engagement, the willingness to really dig into the scriptures and uh, the, the insights were wonderful uh, to, to read texts that are so familiar that we hear in the Eucharist year by year or that we read in the daily office. Suddenly, even after all that experience, new meanings emerging and uh, sparking around the table. Uh, it was just a very vibrant experience. Think about what sort of common life do we need to cultivate in the various places where we find ourselves so that as we engage scripture redemptive readings bubble up rather than readings that are um, ultimately divisive and destructive um, can we take very can we become the sort of people who will wrestle with hard texts until those texts bless us i want to see the respectful conversation continue uh, I want to see the relationships between Africa and the Episcopal Church in the U.S. continue uh, and develop into more respect for each other where we can really hear one another and understand each other's context while at the same time challenging each other to be better representatives of Christ. Given the conversations, just the, the kind of environment that's been created. I wish each and every one of us here would to, to carry that into their parishes, their schools, wherever it is, the, whichever their sphere of influence is, and just be able to create a space where people can be who they are. I would like us to, to liberate <laughs> the, the spirit of liberation, to liberate ourselves from taking sides, from being judgmental, to also liberate the church. Well, we said together as a group in plenary that we, uh, uh, I think across the board, hope uh, that what has begun here will continue in 
forms that we are just beginning to imagine. Uh, more consultations like this. There is no substitute for face-to-face -face gatherings. That's a chief learning and a chief value I think we'll all carry away from this. As useful as electronic communication is, there is no substitute for the kind of sacramental quality of being with other human beings face-to-face. -face. Um, uh, replicate this consultation in various other uh, locales. Um, in Africa, there seems to be a lot of energy with our African partners for doing just that. Um, I can imagine uh, in other parts of the world such uh, consultations happening. In fact, uh, if I want to dream big, I can imagine a growing network uh, around the Anglican world of this kind of coming together uh, to discover common ground. Rooted, can't say enough about this, rooted, I like to say marinated in Holy Scripture um, and worship um, and uh, the sharing of common stories. We are all human beings. We are all uh, um, under the love and mercy of God. And to discover that about each other is the only place to begin.